Hey, everyone. Psychedelic investors continue to have a wait-and-see approach to learn as to how this industry is going to develop. However, this CEO continues to increase their position. Who is it and why? Find out now in our latest podcast. All right, this is the Dales Report, and I'm happy to be joined once again with the CEO of Mind Cure Health, Kelsey Ramsden, back to the podcast. Kelsey, Dad. how are things? Perfect. Fabulous. Perfect? Yeah. I, hey, look, um, I think when you're involved in the, in the industry that we're in, you can either yes. choose to get distracted by some of the things that aren't optimal. You know, we've seen some other news from some other folks, like marginally, either the FDA halts something or this thing happens. Yes, it, that's drug development. So I think the conditions for most of us are perfect. So um, today I'm feeling great. And we get to see each other finally face to face in a couple of weeks down in Miami. How exciting is that going to be knowing that, uh, you know, it's the biggest conference that this industry has ever uh uh, experienced before, but uh, what are you hearing? Obviously, there's a lot of excitement, and why this makes sense, obviously, for investors to get interested too. Yes, knowing what's going to take place over two or three days. It's like uh, I was over in the UK a couple weeks ago. We're jamming on this a little bit before we went live, and there is such a difference when you can meet a person in real life person. And yeah, and, and I've always believed business moves at the speed of trust, and there is you know we can do a lot like this. But there is something that is just a catalyst for more faster when you get together. And I think the industry will see a lot of interesting things yes. coming out of this collision of all of us connecting there. Um, and as far as this I works, know, everyone, this works, but only to a certain point, right? Yeah. I mean, it just, it takes longer is what it comes down to. There is something that is germane about the human connection and Yes. Look, most of us are making big bets. Like when we're doing yeah. partnerships, this isn't little like me. We might, you know, this is real. This is real uh, commitment kind of stuff. And, and especially early in the industry, it's who you choose to partner with. Says a lot about both parties. You know. So yes. we're all taking it really seriously. So I think this in person thing will be. Uh, it'll be fireworks. I think I'm excited. Yeah. Well, in person, I know you had some meetings, obviously, in the UK and Dublin last week, but you uh, obviously uh, made an announcement earlier this week that you have signed an agreement with a company that I absolutely love. It's led by Anthony Tennyson and Awaken Life Sciences. So um, great integrity, sure. smart and entrepreneurs, both you and uh, Anthony possess uh, one of the most likable people within the industry. So aside from all that, explain further about the details of this agreement, why it makes sense for you and why it makes sense for them. Yeah, so one of the things that we built our digital therapeutics technology to do fundamentally, right from the beginning, wasn't just to be a tool for in the clinic and the therapists and the patients, which is great, but to look at further down the old Gretzky, go where the puck is going to be. Yeah. How are we yeah. going to distribute all these protocols? How are we going to make money at every part of the value chain? And how are we going to help other people do that? So we built it to be this distribution network, kind of like the Netflix of protocols. You know, if you're a therapist yep. and you want to treat patients with a variety of indications, why not make that easy? Why not be the sales mm -hmm. force for all of us in the industry? So Anthony was actually one of the first people I approached about it because it's important for us to have the best protocols on the system. And their scientific team is, you know, bar none. It's top it's notch. Top -notch. Top notch. top notch and they don't kid around and i feel like you know in early days dr david nutt right david that's nutt. pretty impressive uh ben sasa like you you can't get better than that and so right. um so for us what it means is the first of many announcements around high profile scientifically rigorous teams deploying their protocols across our platform and mm -hmm. what that means for investors is understanding of another line out of revenue. So it's not just clinic level, traditional SaaS charging therapists and patients, but a distribution model that has licensing fees and allows us to add, stack another revenue layer on for us. Um, and don't you think a big opportunity too, knowing that they focus on alcohol yeah, use disorder like that, that is um, when I think of everything within this industry, and I know we do talk a lot about mental health, you know, alcohol, 
uh, abuse disorder is obviously one of that. Um, But considering what we've gone through over the past 18 months, and you see the amount of consumption of alcohol that has taken place during that time, um, I I guess, what what does that uh, present, I guess, for you and for them? I, th- I think there's a couple of things when we when we when we talk about psychedelics, most people go straight to depression, you know, anxiety, PTSD. Okay. Yes. I think they do. There's just kind of this thing because that's what we talked about most in the early days. But I think when you look at market size and market growth, you have to start looking at things that have existed for a really long time, where there are great know. solutions, where these things show promise. And in particular, when we t- think about alcohol, the same, all the same things that you just echoed are true. And as a therapist, you're kind of out of options. There aren't a lot of great things to be utilizing. So again, it, it, you know, at the therapist level, when you can go into iStream and unlock something that can serve patients that are already coming in the door, trying to sort out, you know, how am I going to move ahead? Um, it, hey, I, I've always said it feels, it feels nice to do well and do good at the same time. I think 100%. This is one of those chances, you know, big market, uh, scalable model, good science and helping people yep. like that's, that's all good. I want to learn about your uh, clinic uh, rollout. You're forecasted to partner with as many as 75 clinics by Q1, Q2, 22. Is that correct? Yeah. So during those two quarters, that's when we go commercial. So going from this right now, we're in a closed beta with MVP, minimum yep. viable product, perfect it, get all the feedback, make sure all the bugs are out. And then uh, and then scaling first in the States and Canada. Um, yep. And then the in future quarters, going over to the UK and EU, that's the next horizon for us. So, like for Awaken, for example, they're expand their rollout of clinics into Europe. That's something that obviously being in partnership that you'll, um, you know, an opportunity to say the least. You'll then increase to over 150 clinics in the U.S., Canada, and Europe by uh, end of 2022 timeline wise. Does that sound accurate? That sounds accurate, and that and those are clinics focused predominantly on psychedelics. Uh, one of the things that wasn't originally built into the model, but that we're coming to understand, we built it to be drug agnostic. So that was the plan. We don't care if it's yeah. psilocybin or 5-MeO or whatever the case. But now we're starting to get inbound from people who don't want to use a psychedelic drug. They're therapist um, clinics who want to standardize their care. They want to measure it. They want to have something for their patients. So... Um, What's that mean, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so that means... I don't know if I've been in therapy before a lot of therapists want to have a better way to communicate with their patients, have a line of sight into what their patients are doing and arm them with something Mm -hmm. so that when they leave the building in the two weeks in between sessions, they have something purposeful to do. And uh, the way that we built is we have a preparatory phase. We have uh, protocols we can design. And then in the end, you know, all of these kind of systems to help monitor I call it the quantified mind. Um, But what it means is it unlocks another 50,000 potential customers on the traditional therapy model that are non-psychedelic. So our ability to- So this is how revenue streams will then develop um, as you roll out, correct? That's accurate. Yeah. I'm curious to see um, what the whole clinical model will look like in the next two, three years Mm -hmm. here in North America and in Europe. But what do you hear on a day-to-day basis as far as, like, what we could actually visualize and see uh, with regards to clinics in the landscape here in North America? Because we talk about the excitement. You know, we talk about there's going to be growth. Um, What does that look like in a couple of years? So I'm going to do a good news, bad news story. Bad news is... I like realists. Yeah, I mean, that's... This is, you know, hope for the best plan for the worst. That's how the... Best yeah. survive, I think. Okay, so the good news is the science is good. People like psychedelics in terms of the research, and we think, you know, we see people scaling uh, clinics, and that's great. The bad news is all of us in the eco chamber and this kind of like echo chamber are pro psychedelic, and we're ready to rumble. The typical Tuesday gym out on the street is not so sure just yet, and so I think mm-hmm. that's why we're seeing this kind of when you actually look at RevGen on these clinics. That's okay, though. You don't you don't expect people to have the answers right now. But um, 
Do you, do you think they will and that this will eventually mature and come uh, an idea becomes reality? Well, this is what I'm getting at is this idea of like <clears throat> what we're seeing today is maybe a bit slower than we planned. However, most therapy, most treatment is based on a person who knows a person who did it and that going pretty well. So I know a guy mm. who went, did this kind of 12 step and then you sign up for that 12 step receipt. So I think yep. once we start to see this uptick, which I predict will start to happen mid to late next year when there's a, wow. when there's a bigger expansive clinics, right? It's a bit of a chicken and egg. You need the clinic to go into to get the treatment, to get the word of mouth, to get it going. So mid to late next year, I think then we're going to start to see the hockey stick. Uh, I think, you know, folks who expected it sooner were maybe just a, a little bit in the hype. Um, but in the realist world, I'm still very, very bullish on it. Mm -hmm. It's just a different way of, of expanding the model. And candidly speaking, a lot of this stuff isn't yet covered. So this is the out of pocket, you know? Well, it's funny. I had a conversation yesterday with another CEO who was saying that I actually believe that phase three trials, when we get to that point, and because of the trials so far have been so promising that the insurance companies are actually going to come in and start funding a lot of these trials. And, um, uh, it's, you know, it seems kind of like, really, like, really? But, you know, the way this is changing and rapidly educating. And one thing I learned, too, is that SSRIs served a purpose when they first launched in the mid 80s. But like, but like anything, and that was groundbreaking, but like anything over time, the world changes. So here we are in 2021. The world has changed since the mid 80s. We need another alternatives. I believe that this is it, don't you? I wholeheartedly believe that this is it. And I think one of the beautiful things about the psychedelics piece, and not a lot of people have spent a lot of time talking about it. I think it's important to take a moment to say, a lot of folks who get on SSRIs stay on them, like in perpetuity. Yes. And there's a lot yep. of side effects that come on staying on SSRIs for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. we see also, not, not only do we see psychedelics doing a terrific job in the short term and absolutely transforming people and you hear all this, you know, 10 years of therapy in one session, that kind of thing. And, and, and that's smashing and amazing. But let's also think about the long term effects and benefits to the net healthcare system. And that's why I'm, you know, kind of secondarily bullish is not only do these uh, treatments seem to be working. But I think the net cost benefit on the long term, when we're not looking at, you know, less liver failure, fewer effects to like long term um, outcomes. That are yeah, that costs, all makes sense. That, you know, the total cost of ownership for insurance companies is is going to be less. So so I'm I'm pretty excited about when yeah. we get to really yeah. roll this out and get the data and, and show it to payers. I think I think it's just math. Well, I think right now, let's face it. Um, the market conditions right now, a lot of investors still in a wait and see type mode, mm -hmm. but stuff like this, as we develop, they start to understand the whole end point of like, where does one industry begin and how does this come to fruition and start to commercialize insurance companies? You know, I think it's only a matter of time before they come in. The question's always brought up about when's big pharma, mm -hmm. when's big pharma going to enter in, but it's the insurance companies that I think will come in more. But I wanted to ask you, because I know, as I said, investors are in a wait and see mode. You've increased your position again earlier this month. So what are you seeing that maybe the average investor is not right now? Um, again, good news, bad news. So here's here's what I think. And some folks might not love me saying this, but okay. I'm aggressively increasing my position. Not only, obviously, I believe in our team, but I believe in the industry. And a lot of people are waiting on the compass data. Yes. I, I, I'm curious, too. I, I also feel like some of that's baked into some of those stock prices of people who have a similar model uh, to Compass. I, I think people are kind of making the assumption it's going to go well. So I'm not sure we're going to see this. You know, people were like, let's everybody's waiting for a tie to list. And there was a little bump, but then everyone settled back. So, although I'm, bullish, they went public in they went public in June. Yeah. I, 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 that that's to me. I, I question, like, why would you not wait till September? But, uh, but whatever, okay. what's done is done. But I think, I think to that point, I think there'll be a little bump. I don't think it's going to be the smasher everyone's hoping for. But what I do think yeah. will be the smasher that everyone is hoping for. So bad news, good news. I think it is big pharma. 
I think uh, we will see a big pharma deal in the you know coming months, and I think that's when we really validate the industry. Not only you know the science validates it, but large investment, truly rigorous like due diligence investment by big pharma. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's when you think see the whole thing just go wild. Um, you got me thinking. You got me thinking. This conference coming up in two weeks. You know, um, there's some big pharma coming. I've seen the names. And let's face it, conferences like this, like I know a lot of executives within the psychedelic industry don't like to get compared to the cannabis industry. However, there's a lot of cannabis investors that uh, focus and and invest in this industry as well. Um, MJ biz has been notorious in the past at announcing big agreements during these conferences. They have a tendency of doing that. So um, it'll be interesting to see what shakes out. Obviously the next couple of weeks add to that. Wow. We get to see each other face to face, but uh, I think the mood's going to be electric for two, three days when we're down there. And what this means as far as a big step forward uh, for the industry, one that you actually will be attending and uh, will be appearing in a couple of panels. So uh, what's the goal for you heading down? The goal at the moment is conserve energy because as I have been made <laughs> aware this morning, uh, it's it starts – there's another event prior to that that I'm headed to as well. There's a Delic event out in Vegas. So I'm, I'm a Delic yeah. and then I head in um, on Sunday and I'm, I'm either in meetings, in dinners, in drinks, in after parties uh, from start to finish from Sunday at about two in the afternoon. And I, and I had to be on a yacht too. I had to add another day on the end because there's so much right. to do. Um, so what's my goal? I mean, it's just, it's just uh, what well, I suppose what a person would expect when you get to see people face to face and you get to advance yeah. the idea that, you know, business moves at the speed of trust. And I think like I opened with, I think people are going to see a lot of things coming out of this time because you do get mm-hmm. to say the final like stare in the eye and go, OK, let's do this or, you yeah. know, um, or otherwise. And I also think, you know, just like I mentioned Vegas, but just like going to Vegas, you can learn an awful lot about people um and about the industry by just watching yeah you know well it's funny i was at mj biz in vegas last week what was the topic of conversation psychedelics right. so uh it was great to see people face to face uh you mentioned um a little bit about compass you also have a big announcement coming coming into the new year q1 q2 uh end of q1 beginning of q2 you're launching your iStream platform uh is that still on track timing wise and uh, most importantly, what can consumers expect once it does go live? It is on track. Uh, that's one thing I will say. We're just updating our deck right now. Um, everything to date has hit the target. And so I'm feeling mm-hmm. really great about that. That's all team, though. I can't take all the sunshine. And uh, what people can expect is just, again, like it's just exacting the plan. You know, you set out a strategy and a goal. Uh, you determine what you want to do. This uh, this announcement with Awaken is just another kind of putting uh, face up a card that shows this is where we're headed. And, yeah. you know, there is this idea of, of g- starting to generate revenue, which is important, starting to generate data, which is equally as important, um, mm-hmm. and being front of market on those relationships as well, because it, it you know, relationships count a lot in this instance. yeah 100 percent. well coming up in a couple of weeks i know for my viewers as i said before the wonderland conference is taking place uh we actually are going to be in a 90 foot yacht that day conducting a lot of interviews and on that day we will be live streaming and i'm excited i'll be interviewing both you and anthony tennyson at the same time to talk about the agreement Amazing. and uh just to learn more about each other's platforms and the synergies that work uh last thing i wanted to touch on because we got a lot of great feedback from our last interview is Project Desire. Um, I know, right? Eh? And I, I, it's for whatever reason, but I feel like in a lot of ways, as you said before, when everybody, people thinks of psychedelics, they think of depression, anxiety, that sort of thing. But there's so many other things uh, involved. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's incredible the feedback that we had and not for the obvious reasons that's re- w- related to women's sexuality, but it's almost like, 
having a voice Mm -hmm. and people are saying thank you like i'm glad this is brought to like you know attention and you're um what was it like for you as far as the announcement and what's it been like since uh, the last time that we spoke? I, I mean, you always hope when you do an announcement that you get some off tip and people are, people are interested. And um, I have been doing more interviews in the last 30 days. And I think my, like I'm drinking a lot more water uh, because I'm doing a lot of talking <laughs> and not just surprisingly too, like the guardian and like it's, it's kind of spreading at like wildfire, which is amazing. And but I think the thing you know that that really hits most is a gal on our team, Andy, who's um on the EA team. She sent me a message. And she was like, "Kelsey, I'm getting so many emails from people that are asking me that, that they want to be in the trial. Can they can they sign up to be on the list of people who'd be considered?" Which you know it's it's great to have the press and the media and all the excitement and the market validation and that. But it's also amazing to see real people who are just hearing about it, reaching out and going, this is a problem for me. And this is a problem. It validates that narrative, right? It's like having a voice. And that's what I mean. When you make it an announcement like that, I'm sure there's a lot of people that's thought, wow, like, you know, here's a company that's thinking about different things, but a lot of people that can understand and relate. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, it's a topic that, you know, as I said before, we got a lot of attention from it. And uh, kudos to you for obviously making that decision. Right? Well, thanks. It's, you know, the, the old fortune favors of old. And when you're in the crosshairs of being at the right place at the right time. And and the other thing I will say, too, is demographics are in our favor, which is when they when they originally the team, the strat team originally told me it's growing at 26 percent a year. And I said, 26 percent a year. That's how many more women feel less desire. And they said, well, no, it's not actually that. The same number of women feel a lack of desire as a proportion of the population is that yeah. people want to talk about it. So the younger gals are coming in and going, oh, it's just not right, you know? Um, yeah. And I love that because they want to talk about it. They want to be at the front of it. And they recognize that there's no reason that women can't talk about sex the same way the fellas do. It's just our part of being human and who doesn't like it? Yeah. Big opportunity once that comes to commercialization, right? I think it won't be bad. Well, listen, keep up the great work. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's T minus, what, eight, nine, ten days? I think so. I think so. It's I'm going to go back. put on some suntan lotion now. <laughs> Get down to Miami. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's keep in touch. Uh, appreciate you connecting with us today, and uh, we'll see you soon, okay? Yeah, always a good time. Talk soon, Chad. All right. Thanks, Kelsey. Bye for now.